Hey everyone, this is Joseph S. Samiego, the author of the Carolingian Age series, and I am here to do a quick video on John of Gaunt. Um, kind of pronounced different ways, John Gaunt. It's, it's an Englana, anglicized version of Gaunt. And he was the son of Edward III of England and very important person. He is what we would consider to be a very powerful man in his day, but also really in his time period, in our time period, he would still be just as powerful, probably equal to a billionaire in wealth and in titles. He was the, uh, if I'm not mistaken, he was the second son of Edward III. The younger brother of Edward the Black Prince, who would have been king. Instead, his son Richard became king as Richard II. However, John was not a was not someone who was just to step aside or be a pushover. John took the role of prince seriously. Uh, he became the Duke of Lancaster, which is where you got the Lanca Lancaster line of the Plantagenets. Always have trouble with that word. So he was part of that famous line that included Richard Lionheart, Henry the um, Second, obviously Edward the Third, Henry the Fifth. Uh, in fact, Henry the Fifth was his grandson, and that's another thing about John. John was the father or grandfather of many monarchs. Um, he was the father of a queen of Portugal, Queen of Castile, and the father of the King of England. Henry the Fourth. He was the grandfather of Henry the Fifth, and actually the ancestor of many, many nobles throughout Europe. He was a decent military leader, wasn't a great one. And if you look closely at his uh, coat of arms on his famous portrait that you'll see that you see uh, next to me here, is that he actually had a claim through his wife, his second wife. To the king, to the throne of Castile, uh, that wasn't a claim that he was successful on. It was after Peter the Cruel of Castile was killed by his half brother Henry the Second that he tried to force his claim, his wife's claim, as Queen of Castile, and failed. However, his daughter became Queen of Castile. So, John of Gaunt was was really a true. Um, powerful, influential noble in that time period. But more than that, he was also very influential with the arts. He was a patron of Geoffrey Chaucer. In fact, his the book of the, the Duchess was written, was paid for basically by John and written for um, the Duchess of Lancaster, who was John's first wife. And he was so distraught over her death that he had a, that book commissioned. So he was a very uh, um, good influence for many people uh, in that time period. Like, as I said, he was a decent military commander. He, he had some minor victories in the Hundred Years' War, and he had some, some very good ideas as far as military campaigns, but he was overshadowed by the Black Prince. And because of that, he, he kind of didn't get a lot of the recognition that he deserved and in fact many later because of his influence he actually was kind of um, scandalized through rumors and falsehoods about his parentage and and just about how he was um, he did have four children I believe four or five children to his mistress who was eventually who was Catherine of Swinford who was eventually um, they were all legitimized after their marriage, so that's where Henry the um, not Henry the Fourth did try to to um, lessen their influence future, but still they were they were part of his family, and they did play a role in future uh, the future line. Now, John of Gaunt's um, position as a son as a prince of England and with prominent male heirs to his line did help 
or I don't know if help's the right word, did facilitate a lot of the fighting in the Wars of the Roses because John of Gaunt's line was a, a male line. Henry IV was from that male line, Henry Bolingbroke. However, it should be noted that his he wasn't uh, seen as a legitimate claim. Uh, neither was Henry V in, in many respects. It just depends on whose side you were kind of taken in, in that. Henry IV was looked at as a usurper. Uh, and it, in all fairness, when Richard II did get to the throne after Edward III's death, I don't remember, remember seeing many no, many scholarly works talking about John of Gaunt trying to seize the throne, more of trying to seize power uh, through influence, which did hurt him politically. However, Henry IV, his son, did seize power, as we all know. So there you have it. So John of Gaunt was a, you know, I don't want to say the term Renaissance man because he, he was good at a couple things. Um, Renaissance men are usually good at a lot of things. And he was good at a couple things. He was good at, at taking power through his influence. He was good at having kids. And he was really good at at his patronage of the arts and, and literature. Military-wise, he was okay. And would he have been a good king? I don't know. I, th I think there was, a, there was a case to be made that he was, a, as a powerful man, he would have probably... And a man with a lot of good connections, he probably would have been okay as a king, especially as a Castile. We may not have would have had the power struggles we had after the Wars of the Roses uh, coming up, and after the Tudor dynasty that you saw with uh, Mary and and her marriage to Philip. Things like that may not have happened. Uh, it may or it may have played out differently. Um, but yeah, at the same time, you kind of have to look at it and say, John Gaunt's failed conquest of Castile or failed recognition of Castile you know and then the Tudor line coincidence I don't know I'm just asking the questions so uh, make up your own mind about that I'd love to hear what your thoughts are and remember like and subscribe again this is Joseph S. Samaniego the author of the, of the Carolingian Age series and you can pick up my books on Amazon newest one The Fate of Kings and Queens is out and Check it out. Thanks.